Welcome back to a round of campfire with America, the ultimate summer camp podcast. I'm Laura. And I'm Callum. And we're going to be talking today about our time travelling and when we're in the US or time sort of post camp travels, um, some tips, some places that we really enjoy going, and um, just a little bit uh, more about that. So, yeah. do you want to give us a bit of a summary of your travels? Yeah, so I was doing a road trip with about five of us. So we only made this decision literally a couple of days before we finished camp. Like, there's no point in even scheduling where to go weeks before because change of plans, people not, might not want to do that, you know. And then a couple of days before is probably the best time because you'll have no one sort of flaking, no one wanting to not do it. We did a road trip to Miami, all the way from Pennsylvania. So it was me, Sarah, Holly, Bentley and Liam all in, crumpled into a car with about five suitcases as well. And it was like a 14 hour road trip to Miami. It was so long. Uh, we went from Pennsylvania through North Carolina, uh, South Carolina to North Carolina, and then all the way to Miami straight. Uh, we stayed off one night in one of Holly's grandparents and it was very, very lovely. And it just shows like way out of the way. There's so many nicer places. So not even like seeing the, yeah. um, you know the main attractions it's it, there's so many nicer places and outside of the main cities yeah and then did miami for a little a couple, couple of days met up with a bunch of other people came back to pennsylvania new york then flew out to los angeles san francisco san diego and honestly probably the most exciting thing i've ever done is just literally going anywhere wherever, yeah. it, wherever it takes you so yeah is that where you like had wanted to go to like was that your sort of plan yeah, so everyone always wants to go to the West Coast, of course. Yeah. And like, I was dying to just go up there at some point as well. I was really good though, because I did miss out on going to like Las Vegas, which a, a few people wanted to, or Yosemite, yeah, yeah. So I was dying to go there as well. Um, and I know a few people who did, and they said they had the best time. But yeah, um, yeah the the West Coast, was, in my opinion, was probably the best aside. But yeah, it was, it was definitely one of the best things I've ever done. And in terms of traveling wise, I probably, that's probably the same oh, yeah, thing with you. What, yeah. was, what was yours? Um, so in my first year, we went from um, camp to my camp to Massachusetts. We went to Boston first, um, spent a couple of nights in Boston, and then went to Nashville. Um, Nashville is my favourite city. I love it so much. It is so much fun. Like if you're into, even if you're not into country music, but you're just into like live music, mm. every single bar in the whole of the like strip is always like playing live music, which is great. Really, really cool city. That's why I've always wanted to go to New Orleans. Yeah, well, we went to New Orleans as well. Um, spoiler. I've never been. <laughs> um, but yeah, we went to Nashville and then we went to Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, and then from in Atlanta, we hired a car and drove down to New Orleans, like through like Alabama, which was bad. Yeah. Um, I went to New Orleans. So after New Orleans, we then drove to uh, San Antonio in Texas, okay. which was one of those places that I'm like, I don't know really whose idea it was to go there, but yeah, I love right, it. It's a real place. Yeah, it is. But honestly, I loved it so much. It was one of my favourite places. It was just, it was nothing like I was expecting at all. I don't really know what I was expecting, but just like, because it's really close to the border between Mexico and the US. Yeah. There's a lot of influence of the sort of Mexican culture, loads of like text different lifestyle as a whole yeah restaurants and stuff like that but it was just really really nice where was your favorite place of all of your travel of in all of my travel I, I, I feel like i have to say nashville however okay. i think um i've done it twice i would go back but i wouldn't like it wouldn't be like my number one place to go back to mm. um mine will probably be san diego well, I was gonna say west coast i really really liked san Pans diego was yeah san diego was beautiful yeah we went to, we did a day in San Diego, or like a day and a half in San Diego, on our way back. So yeah, in my second year we did Boston, Nashville, and then we flew to LA. I hired a car in LA and went to Vegas, and then went to the Grand Canyon, and went down to Phoenix in Arizona. Um, and then from Phoenix went back along to San Diego, spent a little bit of time there, mm. um, and then went back to LA. But yeah, Palm Springs, I think was one of my favourite places. It's just, yeah. it's like kind of desert -y vibes, really nice weather, mm -hmm. like really good culture. Really, really enjoyed it. So how many years have you been to camp? 
I did two years and then like a kind of fake summer last year, but I only did, I only travelled in New York last year. Hmm. But my second year of travelling was like my favourite year. Like that's the year that... Yeah, you knew what you was getting yourself into. we knew what we were doing. We had it, like I was travelling with the same people both times. Mm -hmm. We like kind of had it in our head like, okay, we went to these places this year. Let's try this. go bigger, go home and go... Yeah, like West Coast. See, I only had my first year last year, and like I said, I travel. I, I covered a lot of places for yeah. just one year, and people don't actually understand that, especially with like for first timers as well. With the wage they're on, it's around what two thousand dollars minimum. Yeah. You can do so much with that. Absolutely. Uh, me personally would rather get a bulk payment at the very end and just get it all in yeah. as a payment at the end. So I'm not spending it, and then you just go and use that for your travels afterwards. Like I said, I did Pennsylvania, New York, New Hampshire, Philly, North Carolina, South Carolina, Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco, and that's what like nine major places yeah. in the first year, and it was it was incredible. And I still had like five hundred dollars spare yeah. coming back. Yeah, I think it's like if you're quite strategic with where you go and who you're traveling with as well. Um, I think you can kind of make it work. Like in my first year, this was back when I went in twenty eighteen. So it was back when the pay was only like seventeen fifty or something like mm-hmm. that. It was kind of stretching that budget a little bit further, but we were getting like public transport buses and like not eating out every night. Like we we're staying in Airbnb, so yeah. we were able to like cook in and like have a have leftovers for our lunch yeah. and like doing things to like save money so that we were able to spend that actually like, like traveling to other flicks places. buses greyhounds see the thing is when it came to like actually buying food i thought that was more expensive than takeout yeah like significantly yeah. so yeah like you will i don't know about you but i find myself just getting literally like a chick-fil-a or a wendy's yeah. every single day when you're at camp you have that structure yeah you have breakfast lunch yeah, yeah. dinner whereas you know, when you're about, you, you're constantly on the move, so you don't even actually think. You probably just yeah. grab something like a cart from a cart or takeaway in general. Absolutely. I think that's, like, that's the, the best thing about it for me was the um, progression of I had my watch on all summer and the progression of that, like, every time I took it off and saw that <laughs> the that patch was, like, several shades lighter than the I rest know. of my Because my hair comes down. When I lifted it up, you could just see how pale I was. <laughs> yeah. And like, I was really, really tanned everywhere else. And then yeah. you just see a massive white patch there. Yeah, it's yeah. so embarrassing. And my hair was really blonde as well. It was a great time. Honestly, the travelling afterwards is probably what everybody, even before you get to camp, wants to do more than anything. Absolutely. And it does live up to its expectations, yeah. like a I million think, percent. I think what, what people worry about quite a lot is thinking oh I don't have anything planned like am I gonna find someone to travel with yeah, like so I, easy. I don't know a single person at my camp that didn't have travel plans before they left and nobody arrived with travel plans like exactly. nobody nobody arrived with friends <laughs> like as, yeah, as, yeah, as yeah. weird as that sounds yeah, yeah. everyone's going by themselves you're all in the same boat yeah. and I guarantee within two weeks you'll find yourself a friend for life yeah friends for like like i am still in my massive group uh group chat with all of everyone that speaks and we still speak to this day usually you'd think in any other group chat you'd be in naturally it'd sort of just yeah drift like yeah. it drift you wouldn't you'd see that group chat not get spoken in as much but like every day that chat's active yeah like i'm going to meet a bunch of bunch of them for like a birthday it's like a regular thing as yeah. well and like that traveling side to it really helps you get close to people you actually didn't see that much at camp as well because yeah. not like I could go a couple of days without seeing a single member like one a, a certain type of staff member because I'll be on the other side of camp for like the first couple yeah. of days um but yeah it, it was definitely the best thing to get to know people on Absolutely. a personal basis yeah because yeah, I think like when I first um traveled like I in my first year sorry we traveled like there was four of us for the entire time we like met groups on the way and like but throughout the full time that I travelled, there was four of us mm. um, as a sort of constant group. And it was only one of them that I was like really, really close with at camp. The other two I knew. Um, like they, it was all their second year or third year at camp, but it was my first year. Yeah. And I got really close with this girl, Holly, and she was like, oh, you need to come travelling with us. And I didn't really know the other two, and I was like, oh, I'm not really sure about it. And then like the two of them are now like some of my closest friends. Yeah. Like just, it's mad how... You go from just not really 
knowing if you'll be like pals with someone and then just like instantly yeah but it, it is that traveling like it is that being stuck in a car with someone for seven hours I'm just getting like, to know you in the yeah. stupidest things about him like uh the lad liam who was traveling with he's from australia like he just coincidentally was getting a visa to come stay in manchester which is where i live yeah so like it just worked perfectly yeah. like i didn't really know that until when we was in the car and then it sort of just set in place like right even though like our summer's coming to an end here in america yeah you're still going to be just around the corner from me when i'm back at home and this is what i say it's like everyone on the phone as well when i speak to him is you will be surprised that your best friend could literally be down the road from you going to your camp and yeah. you have no idea Absolutely. like every I, there's so many people from camp that live in manchester that i would have just walked past yeah and just never have spoken to but now they're all like really really close to my heart you know really yeah. really good friends or, around which is or crazy. even i find that i meet people in real life that i didn't go to camp with but i speak to them and they went to a different camp yeah. and we immediately have a connection so it's like cool we're the same kind of person here like like you won't have that feeling until you actually don't camp yeah like no it's so weird to explain because when you are talking about this camp experience you know you are working with kids and not many people are comfortable with working with kids so when you're talking about it say honestly it changed your life you you could probably have people be like oh well couldn't you just be a PE teacher or something yeah. like that but like you don't understand if I if, if, if and when I want to go back to camp it'll be for the people that I've met yeah absolutely. the kids that I've formed really close like relationships with like them and their parents as well yeah it it honestly it does surprise me change your life even though you might be that person to be very closed and yeah nah, it won't affect me honestly it it it, it has and it, it it will yeah so whereabouts like specifically when you did travel what was there any like suggestions or like anything like if i was to go there yeah um for new york my best suggestion is well two suggestions actually and they're both free so get the staten island ferry to see the statue of liberty oh yeah that, yeah that's free yeah it was good it was amazing um, and you don't have to go like you get a much better view of it than <laughs> actually going and standing right next to it um and secondly there's a park over um if you get like a subway over like from the bottom of brooklyn and um, there's this little park just like right on the pier i guess mm. um that shows you the entirety of manhattan and it is the most incredible view. Yeah. It's just like this, I just remember really vividly being sat on this swing set, just like with my view, just being Manhattan. <laughs> just, I'm like, just this is swing. so surreal, <laughs> so insane. Um, and it was free. Yeah. Um, and there's a really nice sort of ice cream um, bit down there as well. Um, but yeah, that's that was my best view of New York, was this little like swing park. My favourite one, Alcatraz, San Fran unbelievable yeah like it's always been my dream to go to that because yeah. i've just loved the history behind it and like when you get there it explains the whole story to know that you was literally in one of the yeah craziest prisons ever yeah that was an incredible experience like when i was going to around the west coast you had there was an there was a nate diaz fight that i really wanted to go to in las vegas but i was a day it was a day earlier than what i anticipated because I was in Los Angeles at the time and I anticipated to stay there for two days. Yeah. Um, but on the second day was the fight and it was literally cost like $50 for the Nate Diaz fight. And it was and the main event. It was incredible. Um, I watched it on the TV, sadly not there, but I wish I could have been there. So I would probably suggest for everybody to book these like concerts, yeah. book these events in advance. If you have a rough e- like rough around where you you might be but even just like yes do that if you're like have some places that you know that you're definitely going but in my first year at camp um we when we were in nashville we'd been there for like i think two days already um and we were just in this bar and this guy came over and spoke to us and was like oh are you here for the beyonce gig and we were like I wish. No. <laughs> I didn't know Beyonce was playing and he was like, yeah, he's, um, she's playing with Jay-Z. It was the On The Run tour um, in 2018. And they were like, um, yeah, she's playing with Jay-Z tonight. Okay. Um, so Sound we were up. like, great. Um, and he had, like, he was able to get a ticket. So we went to see Beyonce. And it was... How the blooming did he 
get your tickets on the day. I, I don't know. We got him. That was the main thing. I don't know if we had like friends that had tickets. There's only three of us that went, but we went to see Beyonce mm. um, at like the Vanderbilt Stadium, which is like a college football sort of stadium yeah. thing. So that was really cool. As was seeing Beyonce, like just oh, incredible. But like the tickets themselves are so much cheaper oh yeah yeah that was like in the UK. that was like maybe 70 80 dollars it's like mad like going to a baseball game yeah. like a basketball game it's literally like eight dollars yeah i'm not even joking and then you come over here and you go to watch a football match and it's like yeah. 80 pound yeah and it's it's insane like like i said that fight was 50 dollars. like i wanted to go see luke combs when he was performing in new york but i was sadly leaving that night yeah that he was doing it the, the day after um, and that was like $30 yeah. and he's like one of the most reputable country singers Yeah. and it's just yeah it's crazy so yeah just book it in advance yeah. especially if you know where you're going as well and um, just have that sort of like spontaneity spontaneity yeah, yeah like am I ever going to see Beyonce again yes I did I saw her last weekend but like at the time I didn't know that <laughs> like, I didn't, I exactly didn't, I didn't know um, and it was just it was incredible it was so good and it was because the stadium was like wasn't like Wembley sized or like Quarry Field or whatever it well it made it a better experience because we were so much closer to yeah. it than we would have been with the same like ticket prices at one of these other stadiums in the UK so we'll run through some of our sort of top tips as well for travelling obviously this is not an extensive list if you have any top tips that you might want to share then please let us know um, but I think first of all is when you're when you are travelling like do it with a budget in mind like Use flex buses, use green yeah. buses. Um, if you're doing like New England, um, on the East Coast, there's a thing called Peter Pan buses, which again, really cheap. Um, stay in hostels, especially if you're staying like with maybe four or five. Yeah. You quite often can just get your own like kind of private hostel room. If it is a big group Airbnb, because that's yeah. split between or, like twelve yeah, people, exactly. is so cheap. Exactly. Obviously, don't think that you need to have everything planned right at the start Mm -hmm. of summer like that's everyone's up that's everyone's biggest fear when going to camp definitely it's not knowing what to do afterwards exactly Um, and even like when i was traveling in my first year when we were in texas we were in san antonio and we knew that we kind of needed to end up around austin yeah we had had nothing booked like we were leaving san antonio and we were like okay well we'll start to drive to austin and see if we can find something on the way and we did we were fine but like it didn't matter like we didn't feel like, There's always a form of transport to get you somewhere, exactly. and it's often it is often the coaches exactly. that'll just save your life, and, and like the these, chief as well. These like cities $20. have have so much infrastructure for hotels and hostels mm-hmm. and Airbnbs that you're never really going to be stuck. It's not like you're in some tiny little town in the yeah. UK where there's one B&B and that's it. Like, I'd probably recommend staying in a hostel, preferably outside the centre, the main areas, because it's funnily enough, hostels and stuff like that in the main areas are so expensive, yeah. often more expensive than a hotel. So try and stay in a bit out and then get like the training. Yeah. Um, is significantly cheaper. Um, or like... You see, like, lamb scooters and stuff dotted yeah, about. So true. using them is quite good, especially if you wanted to go around, like, Times Square. Yeah. Because um, the weather's that beautiful there every yeah, single yeah. blooming day. Like, cash. Use cash, but also use your Monza as well, because in some often, in some cases you may need cash, especially for, like, taxis. Another thing, just obviously this is, this goes without staying, goes without staying, goes without saying, stay vigilant, be, like, if you're traveling with other people like stay with them and especially when you're coming into like bus stations is always where i felt it was a bit seedy yeah (laughs) into making people sorry making friends with people that can drive is is quite a good yeah that's a good one yeah especially if they're over 25 because then they'll be yeah it is quite annoying because you have to be 25 to rent over in america but you can be 16 to drive it just doesn't make sense but um yeah that's a very good that's a very good sort of suggestion i mean one thing I would also suggest as well is getting sort of like a, um, a a big diary so that you can get everyone at your camp to sort of fill it out and write a little story that yeah. they remember you by. I've got one and it's honestly the, when I was doing my travelling afterwards, I was just reading through it all. Like it was honestly the, the sweetest, most touching thing yeah. ever. Still got it. It's the best thing I've, I've probably ever bought when I was in America and it was literally like a $2 diary. Yeah. And it's just full of just every staff member, even some of the kids like, and the parents just writing stuff in it that is just like, you've changed my life. This is what you've done. It's honestly the best thing I've ever done. 
and I would definitely suggest that for you guys as well. It's really good as well. Like I did a similar thing, um, but mostly just for the travel part. Um, but everywhere I was, every ticket that I got, every every Saves. receipt that I got, I saved it and stuff it all in because. In, in a weird sort of way, when you're like there, you're like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember this. This is amazing. Yeah. Like, I absolutely will remember it. But like five years have passed nearly now since I first went to camp. And I yeah. can't really remember that much of it. <laughs> even though it just was... The good, just the good memories. Yeah. Even though it was in, entirely life changing and I had the best time. Yeah. But looking back at that book, I'm reading it and being like, oh, yeah, I do remember doing that now. Or I do remember stopping at that gas station or do like whatever yeah. it is. Also, another souvenir that I just like a sort of cheap souvenir that I got every place I went, which I quite enjoy, was just getting a little sticker from everywhere. So I, I love stickers, as you can see from my bottle. Um, but I have like a sticker from like every like state that I went to, or every city that I went to, um, which I quite like just as a little memento as well of, of where I went. So just another thing, obviously, we've mentioned about going to hostels and airbnbs and whatever obviously you can stay in hotels as well sometimes depending on where you are they can be a little bit cheaper something just to kind of bear in mind is like quite often people have this idea of they want to go and do disneyland they want to do Florida. yeah everyone universal well, universal it is so expensive it is the food drink yeah. alone probably exactly. sometimes if you're buying that for a group of friends more expensive yeah. than the ticket exactly like when you've like yes the tickets maybe i don't know a hundred dollars or something like that but when you're in the park everything is so expensive mm-hmm. to buy food to buy water Fast to buy, track, yeah everything. so pictures yeah <laughs> like obviously don't don't not do it but like don't um, think about it think about like how much it's actually going to cost you but when i was in california we were in los angeles i did one day at disneyland and it was a hundred dollars for the ticket and i spent more in that day yeah that one singular day going to one of the restaurants yeah then i did and the entire rest of the time that was in la like it's just it was so expensive yeah in in terms of like looking out for your money as well like avoid the scams yeah. that are in often the main main city areas most popular ones are probably you know you have the bracelets yeah the cds yes they're the worst ones you'll have people coming up to you giving you a cd and then asking you to pay like a, a, any contribution towards it and then when you give them like five dollars they'll be like is that is that it and then they'll just guilt trip you into paying more and you'd be surprised that some of these people have like card machines and we'll just whip them out and just be like right pay on that but yeah like there's so many different scams so honestly just be so upfront that's my opinion just be like no i'm not bothered yeah. and just continue walking because they will hound you because it's for some people this is their way of just trying to make ends yeah. meet which is um, obviously unfortunate but some people some of them take it a bit too far yeah. and will get quite in your yeah. face about it so Times square is the worst for yeah me. pictures like oh let me take a picture let me take every, a picture everybody um, everybody that's in a costume on Times square walk 500 foot in another direction they will charge you, you for, for money and it's like often just awful like mickey mouse costumes and stuff like that yeah like nobody in Times Square is doing anything to be nice. Yeah. They're all after money. So CDs, you've no idea. Like who even has a CD player anymore? Also, you've no idea if there's anything on it. People will be like, oh, come and buy tickets for my comedy show. No, thank you. Not yeah. giving you $20 Not in the street. Like just things people, like that. Literally just, someone taking a picture of you trying to get a selfie in front of them. Yeah. Main just it's, attractions as well. It's just not, um, don't trust anybody in Times Square. Pit pockets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, keep like bag like kind of close to you if you need to have a bag, but like inside pockets, zip pockets, yeah. inside pockets, that sort of thing. Not that everywhere is awful, but just yeah. <laughs> to be quite vigilant yeah. with things. It's a lot busier. Yeah. In the likes of New York than it would be in most areas. Absolutely. So, so yeah, just and that's not just New York; that's just everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Another suggestion I would probably uh, mention is if you want to do something, go and do it, even if it's by yourself. It doesn't matter. I went and did a few days by myself. Um, because I basically got a coach to Delaware because I wanted to do a couple more days in New York because I only stayed for a night and obviously everyone wants to go to New York and considering Pennsylvania is right next to it I never got to actually see it so I went and stayed in New York for like a couple more days because there was a couple of other people who were actually that was their final destination so it worked out perfectly for me Um, so yeah don't just rely on other people's suggestions like if you want to go somewhere go and do it because you, you most likely will regret it 
if you go home you never went to it i don't know if that was yeah absolutely just yeah so things like that like do things that you want to do um obviously within reason but um don't like kind of let other people's plans just kind of knock all of your wants and desires sort of out the way as well yeah well yeah probably to to wrap it wrap this all up i mean everyone is really excited to go and do the traveling afterwards like it is probably one of the better parts of going out to do americam um, especially because you get that full 30 days and you have the you have 30 days beforehand as well yeah so like I know some people have gone and done 30 days before and 30 days afterwards that's so insane um, yeah so just to kind of wrap us up um, I think we've kind of been through some of our top tips and some of our like favourite places that we've been um, I think for both of us West Coast is the yeah. best coast but yeah I think it is. <laughs> um, but also East Coast is equally um, brilliant and I want to do a little bit more sort of in the middle here as well yeah that's the thing i've not done any of this and yeah if we're talking uh the north and south I, i'd love to especially texas that would be yeah. so in louisiana yeah like really do make take advantage of 30 days if you can absolutely uh, that's my biggest and favorite suggestion is absolutely milking the traveling afterwards because yeah. not many people get to do this in a lifetime never mind now whilst we're young you know yeah so 30 days is a lot so yeah definitely take advantage of it um keep us up to date with sort of like your sort of pictures your experience um and yeah tell us your itinerary as well um and you know we'd love to share that with everyone yeah if you've got any top tips that we think we've missed um, please let us know too yeah um, thank you very much guys bye